I said that I couldn't clean it when he does. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Yeah. 
Do you not know, have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not have warrior power. His understanding is inscrutable. He gives strength to the weary, and to him who lacks might, he increases power. So youths may grow weary and tired, and vigorous young men stumble badly. Yet, those who wait upon the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for the opportunity we have to gather in your house today to sing your praises, to hear your word proclaimed, Father. And Father, let us remember that if we wait on you, we'll gain new strength. We'll gain a strength that will help us, Father, as we walk our daily lives and as we meet the toils and troubles that have come before us. Just ask that the Father that you help us each to remember to turn them over to you. Just now, Father, we ask that you bless this service. For us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. By the way, I heard the weather, the weather forecast this morning. I saw it on the sign on my home from work. Weather forecast is God reigns, R E I G N S, sun shines, S O N. thought that was pretty, uh, pretty genius to share that with you this morning. I need to close this with great care. I had to borrow this. My Bible seems to have found somewhere the place itself that I don't know about. Which is a shame, but okay. Next praise him this morning is Lord, I lift your name on high. This is a happy song, too. Lord, I live to be one of my love. Lord, I love to see you with praise. I'm so glad to be one of my love. I'm so glad you came to say goodbye. You give me a heaven and a word. It is shown by the cross, died there for the cross and grave, on the grave to stand. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my heart. Thank you. 
Stepfather Robert Elliott is in a critical care unit. Uh, he's 19 years old. And our uncle Frank has a mass on his brain. He's also he's 89. He's also in the hospital. One went to critical care and one went in the hospital on the same day. So ask you to keep them in your prayers. Also, uh, of course, as always, those who need to make a decision and those who have slipped away. And I need to be brought back to the fold. Miranda Dennis, Joey's wife, has been diagnosed with sarcoma cancer. We'll know more after the doctor's appointment tomorrow. And we ask you to keep her in your prayers. She's had some pretty rough days here in the last week. Uh, also, the Eugene Santelli family and the Bill Boucher family. Funeral services for this past week for both Eugene and Bill and flowers today are in your memory. Also, baby Giada, um, for whom we've been praying that she passed away, so we ask you to uh, keep that down in your prayers. Alan Fleming has procedure this Friday to help determine the best course of treatment for him. Also, Ruth Rehovic is now at home. The prayers needed for Bill and family. Joe Bryce will have surgery this Wednesday at William Park. Grace Browning having surgery this Friday. Darnie and Daniel, Don and Martin and Craig's daughter, uh, with blood infection. Dean, as he is in revival this week at Dutch Fort Christian Church. <laughs> and Emma Green, she's in uh, Harrison Community, room 416. As I said, our third room this morning is more precious than silver. And after the uh, turn of our prayer, we're on the wrong way to wish you some prayer. <laughs> Routine. 
or it's something we do out of a habit. It is my prayer that we will sit down and realize that it is, it is our worship for you because there is nothing impossible that you can't do for us and that you won't do for us if we learn to put you first and foremost in our thoughts and in our prayers. We ask that you'll be with us, be with the speaker of the hour, and uh, bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The meeting here this morning is the bread of the world. A few thoughts I had while I sat there in my little piece of the world about three o'clock this morning. As I sit here in my little four by six abode at work, I can't help marvel as I look out over the hills and the valleys and the beauty of creation. I see the grass turn from brown to green. I watch the trees come to life with buds and leaves. I watch the clouds roll by in the daytime, gaze at the stars and the skies at night. When you take it all in, those things, you know it didn't just happen. You can't help but realize God is alive and providing us this beauty. But on a darker side, God provided us with something not so glorious. He gave his son Jesus to die on the cruel cross of Calvary, bearing the burden of our sins and a horrible, agonizing death. But wait, there's a bright side to this horrible ordeal. Our Savior Jesus broke the bonds of death. He rose from the grave to join his Father in heaven to prepare a place for us. We gather around this table each week to remember Jesus' suffering by sharing in his body the bread, his blood the cup. As a reminder, but glory to God, we have the table regenerated to do His. We leave the table regenerated to do His will and join Jesus in heaven. Communion this morning is bread of the world.
Now that the bread is on the table, it is a symbol of Christ's body. The reason it is white, it is pure, and it is unleavened. And Heavenly Father, we bless this bread for each and every person who's going to take part in this is home. And I thank you. Father, we definitely thank you. Most of all, Father, for strengthening and giving them your son, giving them your son, and help us this morning to step in and open our heart, become lax in our service to you. Thank you, Lord, that Christ died that we might live, that we might live to you in heaven with you. And Lord, we need to take this day to spiritualize and bring this. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the awesome 
things that you do for us in our everyday lives. Sometimes we question the way things go in our life. It's your will, it's your way. And we thank you so much for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on that cross for our sins and rose up to show us the direction we need to go by following your word and your scriptures. As we come to this time of service to give back to you, let us give back with a very open heart so we can continue building on your kingdom. Bless those who can't give. Bless those who just as a fortunate can't give. For this is in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Just because he is, 
we got two punishments and two strikes against us. That's some scary stuff there. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> By imagine here, the 40 days and nights that it took God to destroy the earth, He had His new plan ready to go for when the ark came to rest. But He stepped it up this time. Instead of using punishment, God decided to use love and kindness to show us how we should live. So He sent messengers. Tell people that he's going to send them aside, a living person, to teach us and to show us the way we should live. And we all know that that Messiah is Jesus, the Son of God. So Jesus came, had his ministry, performed all kinds of miracles. And on the other hand, there were people that didn't believe he was the Son of God. So what did they do? They nailed Jesus to the cross to die. Now that should have been strike three right there, but it wasn't. And we all know, a few short days later, God resurrected Jesus to prove two points to us. First, it was that Jesus didn't die in pain, and that God is the king of kings, and to show us that there is life after death. And then he went on. He gave us this. The five new rules to follow. And you know what those are. Hear, believe, confess, repent, be immersed, live a faithful life. Now, you can say that he gave us the key to heaven, right? Mm -hmm. Now imagine this. God will give you a key to any bank in the world in five directions on how to use that key. You would use it, right? Well, he gave us this in five simple rules to follow. So why don't we use this to get into heaven? And I'm here to tell you, when God comes back to collect his people, that, my friend, is strike three. Game over. But, it's a very important but. You live by this and those five simple rules, you'll be exempt from that very strike. So you got to ask yourself, would you rather be exempt from that third strike, or are you going to go down swinging? God, you know, wants us to be in heaven. That's why he gave us the room. And that's like the third strike when God comes back. So you have to ask yourself, you know, and only you can make that decision. No one can make it for you. So he gave you the tool, and he asked you to use it. And if you don't, it's nobody's fault but yours. And that kind of wraps up my message. I know it's kind of short. That's the way I understand God's plan of salvation. So, Dolly comes to play the invitation song. I'd like to thank everybody for the opportunity to speak to you today. It's a very humbling experience. I'd like to invite Everyone who stands to sing this song, we invite anyone who wants to join the Lord today to step forward. Thank you. Thank you. 